if you own stocks, you saw the value of your portfolio get beat up this week. We saw the NASDAQ, which is comprised of the high flying stocks really taken on the chin. The S&P now is starting to follow suit. So the big question is, is this the beginning of a larger decline or is it like what we've seen in the past you know, few years, quite honestly, a buy on the dip time? So I'm gonna talk about what's going on in the market and what I expect to see next on today's Wealth Talk. So let's talk about first and foremost, what is the catalyst? What's driving this market down? And let's try to figure out what's gonna happen next. Well, one thing I always talk about, I've talked on previous Wealth Talks that you need to understand as an investor, any type of investor, real estate, stock market, when you make your plan to invest, the first thing you're always gonna look at is the 10-year bond. The 10-year US government treasury is considered the risk-free rate, which means if you can get a certain rate of return with the 10-year that's risk-free, anything that you're investing in that has any amount of risk greater than risk-free, which would be anything, it needs to get a rate of return that's higher than that. And so what we're seeing this week is a huge run up in that risk-free yield. This is the thing that also for you real estate mortgage guys out there that drives interest rates on those you know longer dated, even short run mortgages. That was at about one and a quarter. Now we're pushing up against 1.5%. Now going from one and a quarter to one and a half might not seem like a lot, but percentage wise, that's about a 20% move. The biggest concern though, is the velocity of that move. And when people see that move so quickly, they're obviously thinking, well, what's gonna go next? It's gonna be one and three quarters, two, two and a half, three, three, four percent So people start wringing their hands and they get a little bit nervous. And also let's remember guys, just at the beginning of this month, we were hitting all time highs. So there's a lot of people in the market today, especially in the high flying NASDAQ names that have a lot of profit that are looking for any excuse whatsoever to take some money off of the table. The big news is the tenure, that was the catalyst this week. So people are really looking at that as the reason to take some money off. Now, let's talk about where do we go next though? What do I think? One thing I think to put in perspective, you know, I talked uh, at the beginning of this year and I continue to believe the two biggest risks to this market, the overall economy is obviously the virus Right now it's being priced in that everything is up and running at least by Q4 and we're getting back into full swing. That's priced into the numbers, it's priced in to the economy. The other thing is interest rates. If interest rates start to go above 2%, that is going to be a huge headwind for the market because the cost of borrowing is gonna go up, which impacts companies, it impacts consumers that are paying revolving uh, rates on their credit and things of those nature. So rising interest rates, guys, which we really haven't seen in 20 years is probably one of the worst things that could happen to any investment out there. So people are starting to get worried about that. But some perspective around that, if we were to get to two, two and a half percent, and let's say stabilize there, well, historically, that is a very, very low tenure. When I got started in the market in the late 90s, it was almost 7% which meant any investment that I did for the next 10 years had to do you know, higher than, than the 10 years, 7%. So the hurdle rate was very high. So why would I do you know, stocks that may do eight or nine when I can go risk-free and get a 7% rate? And therein lies the challenge. As that rate goes up, the 10-year, the return that you need from other assets needs to be higher. So people really get nervous about that tenure, especially big institutional money managers like us, we need to keep an eye on that. But at two and a half percent, historically that is still very, very low. And some people are talking about six to 7% GDP for the US economy this year as we reopen. And if you're talking about that type of growth, if you get some outside of the monetary stimulus, we have fiscal stimulus where we start to do infrastructure spending and all those things, that's actually gonna accelerate that any further. Under those conditions, two and a half percent is not very high and I believe markets can stabilize and also rally. The challenge right now though, is I think in the short run, we're a little bit overbought. Things went up a little bit too fast, too soon. We've got the 10 year ticking up and everyone's looking for an excuse right now. We're in earnings season. Even the stocks that are reporting good earnings right now are also getting beat up very well. So what do I think is gonna happen? Well, short run, let me tell you what I'm thinking. 
The challenge is when you look at technical analysis, this is just charting, this is a topic for another day, but there's things called moving averages, which basically take certain period of time, so maybe 50 days, 100 days, 200 days, and they put the average of that movement and it draws a chart. A lot of technicians, a lot of market watchers, including myself, especially in periods of high volatility when there's not a lot of clarity, will go to the charts and they'll look at this technical analysis as a way to make investment decisions. So right now we pulled back to that 50 day moving average. But like I said, this has only been a couple days, even though it seemed kind of scary, you've seen your portfolio values drop down, it's only three to 4%. Now there's something called the 200 day moving average, which has taken the last 200 days and puts a line for us to look at. And historically, that's one of the more important moving averages. What you have to be prepared for, no matter what you're doing in the stock market, whether you're a long-term investor, trader, whatever it is, there is a very good possibility that we break below this 50-day and test that 200-day moving average. Now, it's going to seem scary when that happens. That's about a 10% decline. So if you got $100,000 in the S&P 500, you could see that go down to 90,000 that you're going to see happen. When that happens, my belief is, and I do think there's a good chance that it does happen because if that happens, it would still be a normal correction. We'd still be in a bull market, but it could take some of the froth. It could get some of the weak short-term hands out of the market. And as scary as it may seem, actually be a reset of the decks and actually create a more healthy, stabilized environment for stocks to start rallying from there. So in my view right now, based off of the data that we're receiving, uh, you have to be prepared for that to break the 50 day and go to the 200, which is about another 10% down. If it rallies from here, if we see the 10 year stop, stabilize some other good news, we've rallied many times from the 50 day moving average. So just because I'm talking about the 200 day, it does not mean we can't rally another 10 to 20%. We absolutely can. But what I'm telling you from a risk management perspective, if we pull back 10%, if you're putting new money in this market, be prepared for that, don't panic. Now, I believe that valuations in the market are a little stretched. There's a lot of the good, you know, stay at home technology names that we've looked at in the past that I wouldn't mind buying a little bit more on a 15% pullback. And I think when you look at some of those names, that's definitely where they could go to. Uh, I do believe some of the industrial names we talked about, uh, you know, even the energies, the Chevrons and those types of names, also some of the bank names. These are names that have not really participated as much in the last few years, those dividend growth type of names that you fly in, in the dividend aristocrat index, I think really are gonna probably case some catch up. There's a lot of places to be. I don't think this is time you lock your money in at one and a half percent by any means if you're a long-term investor in treasuries, but it is a time where I think you need to be a little bit more nimble. It's a time where you have to have a little more patience. And one of the biggest things I think you need as a long-term investor especially is conviction. So if you're gonna buy into something and see the market dip, panic and sell it out, that's the number one mistake that the average retail investor makes. They're constantly buying high and selling low because they're buying things they don't understand, they don't have conviction in. And as soon as the market starts to trick down, guess what? They panic. The smarter guys know something more than me. I better get out. This is the next big recession. I don't know what's gonna happen, guys. That is not a recipe for success. It's a strategy for disaster. If you're gonna panic every time the market dips, how are you ever gonna be opportunistic? The whole idea like Warren Buffett says is you wanna be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. The scariest times, the times where everyone's skeptical is the best time to buy. So not ringing the, the you know, get out of the market bell by any means, and especially if you're a long-term investor, this is not a point in time where you try to sell your portfolio. If you're a trader, very, very different, different dynamics. We're not talking about that. I'm speaking to you, have money in 401ks, have money in IRAs, Roths, you know, long-term investments that you're making. This is not the time to panic, but I wanna be here to tell you why this is happening. It's because we've had a big run up. We're seeing the treasury yield spike up. People are looking for an excuse right now to do it. I still think the underlying economy is very strong. We're seeing retail sales numbers go up. You're going to start to see unemployment dip as we open back up. The news is going to be good, but I think we went a little too far, a little too fast. 
We could be due for a correction, but again, as a long-term investor, especially for someone who's dollar cost averaging, constantly buying into the market through things like your 401k, you need those opportunities. If you like something that was 20% higher a month ago and everything is still the same, they're still doing great on sales, they're still managing their balance sheet, they still have great and efficient management place to be able in place to be able to execute then why would you not want to buy more of that stock? The stock market is one of the few places that when things go on sale, nobody wants to buy. Everyone gets scared. You need to retrain yourself to be a little bit more of a savvy shopper. Look for those discounts on quality merchandise, though, because there's going to be some junk that no matter how far they mark it down, I'm not interested. I don't want the polka dot dotted or, or uh, cow pattern uh sport jacket no matter how how cheap it gets i don't want it but if it's something that i like tom ford uh canali suits and those go on sale guys i'm ready to buy more of those so just wanted to give you that update do not panic this is probably going to be a little bit bigger or more of a correction something that you need to be prepared for but as a long-term investor remember up until now since the stock market started, 100% of all corrections have been a buying opportunity. And if you maintain that diversification that I talked about the other day, for those of you following me on Instagram, where you have that barbell of your high quality dividend paying stocks along with your growth stocks, that diversification is what helps you get through times like this. So go back to the drawing board, look at your portfolio, make sure you're not on margin, make sure you're not only invested in a handful of stocks, make sure you're not just dependent on one sector, make sure you got a good diversified portfolio. If you have a little cash, maybe keep that dry, look for that pullback. If you get that nine to 10% pullback when everyone's scared, jump in, put some money to work. If you're a long-term investor and you have that type of time horizon and that fits your risk tolerance. But guys, by all means, do not make decisions based off of the news media or things that you're hearing that you don't understand. So that's this week's Wealth Talk. Uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight to what's going on with all the volatility. Do me a favor, if you haven't, please click the bell. You'll be notified when we release the new content every week. And I'm asking you, please, if there's any topic that you wanna hear about, drop me a line below. And if you could do me a favor this week, Send my channel out to three or four people. Let's inform people. The reason I got onto social media was to democratize good financial information so we can empower people to make better decisions. And this is the best way I know how to do it for free. Every week it's live. There's not anybody that can't afford free. So please send it out to them. I appreciate you and have a great week.